hope you are well. Today's video is actually a video that was done live, but unfortunately we had some sound issues and so it's this exact same video, but just now I've cleaned up the sound and so I wanted to make sure that we had this video available because it, in this video, it is designed to give those of you who are listening some insights. Let me just introduce myself. My name is Jess. I am the founder of Black Travelers Network. So hello everyone out there. And here's what I have to say before we get into today's topic. I wanna take care of some quick housekeeping items. On your screen, you will see a list of destinations. These are our upcoming trips. I don't wanna date the show. So what I will say is that these trips are trips that if any one of the destinations jump out to you, Brazil, Spain, South Africa, Kenya, Vietnam, definitely send us an email at blacktravelersnetwork at gmail.com. That's Black Travelers, and Travelers is spelled T-R-A-V-E-L-E-R-S, network at gmail.com. Definitely reach out to us if any one of these trips speaks to you. These are packages, so you definitely will have to get on a payment plan to be a part of the travel experience and the sooner you decide the better off you will be and that's that on that today's topic is simone biles the hidden message behind traveling to see a man okay this is a really important topic, especially nowadays when you see there being a rise in people making and establishing connections online. And a lot of people taking those connections and relationships from online to offline. And so this is actually a really important topic. And so Simone Biles' husband recently had a controversial clip from an interview he did with the Pivot Podcast. And if you don't know about the Pivot Podcast, I encourage you to go over to their site and take a look. The Pivot Podcast is a number of former NFL players who reach out and interview different athletes about sports. I I think their main focus is probably on football players since that's uh, the sport they come from, but they interview them and they give the viewers a different look and a different take on the athlete's life. And they ask like real questions to kind of help all of us viewers understand more about the person or the people that they're interviewing. And so I want to take a moment to play a clip from the Pivot Podcast. And this is Simone Biles' husband's controversial clip from his interview. So take a quick listen. How in the hell did you pull Simone Biles? <laughs> Man, and we, I love this football talk, bro. I gotta get yeah. to him. I'm over here rubbing my <laughs> knees trying to ask this question. <laughs> hey, Chad, I wanted to tell him, he's talking about being looked over. Now nah, when the right people look at you. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> How did you do that, bro? Man, it's really, really how she pulled me, man. That's the question. Oh, man. Lord Jesus. Now you with Freddie. Now it's back. <laughs> now now you listen, with I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Organic story, man. So I'm uh, I'm about, I just got to Houston. I probably have been to Houston seven months. Um, I was single at the time, you know, so I'm just living, being me and myself. And COVID had just hit. and But I had just went to Arizona. And one of my boys was like, hey, man, you got to check out this app, you know? And I'm like, man, I'll check it out. Like, what is it? It was called Raya at the time. So... Um, basically, it's like a dating app, but you know you have to go through certain like criteria to make sure that you're who you are. So literally, have been on the app for a couple of days, man, and it's like she pops up, and I'm like, mm, let me see who this is. Gymnastics? I ain't never, you know, I, I never really paid attention to gymnastics, so it, it, it piqued my curiosity, you know. So I'm like, okay, that's 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 a, I, I'll see what's up. I swiped her, and it said we match. So I'm just like, oh, okay, so I'm gonna see what's up. So I go do my workout, and I come back, 
and I get like I had some likes on my Instagram, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, this might be. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I see what's up, and then I still waited. I'm like, man, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till I, you know, take a shower and everything. Then I come back to my phone, and then she messages me on the app like, hey, you know what I mean? And I'm, man, that's up, man. This gotta be fake. Like I don't know. Just I didn't know who she was at the time, but. Like the first thing that I saw was that she just had a bunch of followers. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, she got to be good. If yeah. I promise you, I'm a, I'm a real life story. When she won the Olympics, I was in college, and we didn't have NBC, we didn't have Olympic channels, and we're in camp. We're in camp late, late, late July, early August. So I'm not paying attention to, you know. So I never would have had a moment to where I would have watched, like, you know. Jonathan, I'm gonna let you finish your story, man. Continue. <laughs> But like I was saying, man, she she messaged me. This was like a Tuesday, and we 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 were texting back and forth, and then we hung out Friday, man. And um, we couldn't do much as COVID happened, everything was shut down. So um, she came through down um, down to Houston. She lived in the suburbs, so she had to drive about forty five minutes to me. Um, then the rest is history, man. So so you was really the catch in. I always say we the men are catch, man. I always say we the catch, man. Yeah, so she really booked you. She did though. She is did, what you though. said. Cause I was, I was fighting it. I was fighting it. So I was you, fighting it. So in truth, if I say this out loud, was Jonathan Owens ain't really want Simone Biles. Is at, what you're saying. At the time, that, that's what you're not gonna say that. That's what you're saying. I was afraid. I I was afraid to commit. I'm like, ah, I'm Man, this my this my third year, you know. I'm trying to ah, I'm like it's kind of early, but you know, like I said, man, it happened when you least expect it, and we hung out, man. It was like we hit it off instantly. So here's what I have to say about this: traveling to see a man. I have done this many of times, plenty of times, and what I hate about this narrative of women traveling to see the men they are interested in or the men that they are dating is how it actually gets framed. In other words, the whole story is not being told. And her husband sits in the interview boosting himself up like Simone Biles came up when she got with him. And it's like, dude, she could have had anybody that she wanted. Okay, let's first give the good sister, her props. She had choices and options and she could have had anyone outside of him. She is Simone Biles. It is a bunch of dudes she could have gotten with, but she chose to be with him. So she definitely was choosing. Like we are not going to ignore or overlook the, that fact. Like she saw something she liked <laughs> and she went for it, okay? And so I understand Simone with that respect because when I was much younger, probably around her age in my early 20s, I was young and I was literally that girl. I was what we call game goofy. I mean, you don't know, you don't understand game at all. You just see something you like and it's like, oh, I like him. Let me see what I can do to make this happen. Don't put a good looking man in my face. <laughs> you know, that I understand her because I was that girl. I was so much like that. Now it's different because really good looking guys, they don't really do it for me like they used to when I was in my 20s. I'm more today, I'm more of a substance kind of person. And with regards to look, looks, I'm not... I, I'm, I've never really been too into like pretty boys or anything like that. I like men who are rough around the edges. I like men who are very masculine and handsome. So today I lean more into, you know, the man has to be a handsome man. He can't be too clean cut or too pretty. I, I really like a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of... Uh, Facial hair, I, I love facial hair. I love seeing men in their element. I, I, just, I just love men. <laughs> I love all kinds of men, let me just say that. But again, what I hate about this narrative is it doesn't tell the full story. Simone, in the early stages of her and her husband 
connecting and trying to get to know each other. She traveled 45 minutes to see him and it could have been for any number of reasons that she got in her car (laughs) and drove across town to see this man who is now her husband. I'll tell you why I would travel to see a man back way back. Now I'm, I'm much different, but I would do it again for a number of reasons. Sometimes I had more flexibility in my schedule. I was making quite a bit of money at the time and I could have moved around very easily. And the men that I was seeing at that time or during those times may not have had the flexibility in their schedules because, you know, I dated different types of guys. Some of the guys that I dated were very did very well financially (laughs) so a lot of times when you do well financially you don't have a lot of time um but then i also dated guys who weren't as good financially and so they had to put in a lot of work to to generate money and some of them may have had a kid or kids so their flexibility and their resources and being able to move around to you know come see me all the time was not necessarily something that, depending on the situation that they may have been able to do. So I would be willing to travel to them. That's one reason why I would travel to a guy. The other reason why I would travel from time to time to spend time with or visit a man that I was seeing is I travel to a man so I could control how long I stayed and when I left. (laughs) You know, I oftentimes don't like to have my time controlled. So if I'm done with the situation, I like to be able to get up and leave, you know? Uh, So I felt I had better control and full control over my time if I traveled to him rather than if he traveled to me. I've also traveled to a man because I didn't want him to know where I lived at the time. You know, much of my adult life was spent spent or has been spent traveling the world, traveling the country at one particular time, largely, but traveling the country, traveling the world. And I never wanted anybody to show up unannounced. So for safety reasons, there would be a number of times where I was getting to know a guy and I didn't want him coming over to my place because I just had a fear that maybe one day he'd show up unannounced and I didn't want to deal with that. So I would travel to them for safety and security reasons, because again, I could control when I left and how long I spent visiting. Sometimes I wanted to get out of the city that I was assigned to be in. You know, I in my former career, I had no control over where I lived. The company that I was working for, they would choose my assignment and I had to just go. It, I had no say in what city or what state I was placed in and I just had to go. And if I was in a lame city or a slow town, (laughs) you know what I mean? I would want to get out. And so if I was dating someone who was into me and I was into him, I would sometimes travel to see him because I was in a small town and I didn't want to be there. (laughs) So I'm not going to lie on here. I'm, I'm going to be honest because We are all grown, Uh, all of us who are listening to this broadcast. And I say that because, you know, I checked the, the mark that no, this is not for children. So I would just say sometimes back in the day, <laughs> sometimes I would travel to get some good D. A good, some good D is all about the experience of it all, okay? And that's all I would want at that particular time. And I didn't want to have it be any more complicated than that. So if I was liking somebody and it was purely a physical thing and purely 
you know, for lack of a better word, casual and, and, and casual is a whole different topic. But if it wasn't very serious and I was just up for the fun and up for the experience, I would again want to travel to him because it was about the experience for me. It was about my terms and what I wanted and how I wanted it. You know what I mean? So at that time, I wouldn't have a problem traveling to see a man. You need time to actually spend with a person before making a serious commitment to them. And so I feel like for people who are in long distance relationships or for people who are on online dating and you've been in communication with the person over time or for a while, or, or maybe you guys meet in a place and then you things change and one person has to go back home or another person has lives there and the other person gets like in my case reassigned to a different place you still need time to spend with the person to figure out whether or not there's something there that you guys can work with in terms of compatibility and in terms of your desire for each other you need time to spend to see if it could lead to something more if you if this is someone you can build with and i always felt like it was worth investing on the front end to go travel to see the person that i'm liking on or that he's liking on me if the feel, feeling is mutual i felt like it was important to do that because I wanted to figure out if there's a match versus waiting and investing months, if not years at a time, only to find out that I should have spent more time with this man because we are not compatible in this area or I don't think it's gonna work. So for me, travel has always been a great way of me assessing if the connection we have over the phone, I don't do online dating, but if the connection we we experienced over the phone or if the connection we experienced when we first met, is that something that we can build upon? I need to know that sooner rather than later. And so I've traveled to see, I've traveled to spend time to get a feel for the person. I remember one time traveling to spend a little more than a week with this guy that I'd been uh, in communication with for, we've been talking over the phone for like a couple of months and I had to travel anyway. And I was going close to where he was. And so I was like, forget it. Let me just see, because we vibed so well over the phone and we would FaceTime and all of that, send pictures and all that. But I'm like, I need time with this guy to see if there's something there. Like he started talking quite serious and let me know like he's of a mindset where he's looking for a serious commitment. He wanted to be married. Now, I personally, that's the only thing that kind of made me hesitate because I'm not, I would have to be honest and say I'm not in a, frame of mind where I'm ready to get married or I want to be married. That's not the stage that I'm at right now in this season of my life, but that's the stage in the season he was in. And so I wanted to give it some time for us to actually spend time, do basic things, day-to-day -day things, and for me to see. And I gave myself eh, probably a little more than a week because he actually did invite me to come stay with him. And after the visit, I knew probably like two, three days into the visit, I knew it wasn't going to work. I was like, oh no, this is not for me. I'm not feeling him. Like if I could have, I would have got on the plane. Well, technically I could have gotten on the plane after, on day two, but I was like, let me be right and let me be fair and let me just be honest uh, and give this an honest shot. And the more time went, the more I'm like, oh no, oh no, this ain't gonna work. Oh no. Like every single day it's like waking up first thing in the morning. And the first thing that comes to mind is in, oh no, <laughs> it was just something about him that I just did not like. And I, I couldn't imagine 
being in a relationship with this guy. Like, it, it was just such a freaking turnoff. And I, I'll have to save that for a, a, a later video, but I say that to say I traveled to him because if I would have waited for him to travel to me, we would have been communicating for like a year plus before he was able to get his stuff together and actually come to visit me or come to see me. I didn't want to waste that time. So within a couple of months after we communicated, I was like, let, let me let me pull the trigger. Let me figure this out. And the minute I did was the minute I was like, oh, no, 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 no. And I'm thankful that I did it because I didn't waste my time. <laughs> I didn't waste any more time. And I got a chance to see a beautiful place while I was assessing the possibilities. So I'm going to speak up on this because there could have been any number of reasons why Simone Biles traveled 45 minutes to see Jonathan Owens when they first got together. With lots of people meeting online, it makes sense that people are going to travel to see each other. And sometimes it may be one person is traveling more than the other person. But the hidden message that some men may receive ladies when we travel to them is exactly what Jonathan Owens obviously took from Simone traveling 45 minutes to visit him, which is he is the prize. Unfortunately, when you go to a man, you could have a long laundry list of reasons like I have and like why I kind of prefer to. You could have a laundry list of reasons, but what that uh, unfortunately can communicate to many of them is that they are the prize and that you should be working hard to get them because they're it, okay? Now, I listed all of my reasons why I traveled to men, but don't you know, the men that I was dating during those times, the minute I pulled back and stopped traveling to see them, I got one of three reactions. There were a couple of instances where the men just flat out ended up getting upset that I wouldn't come to them anymore. The example that I gave you with the guy that I went to visit and said, I'm going to give it about a week or a little more than a week to assess whether or not this could work. When I told him that I was not coming <laughs> to visit him anytime soon. Oh, he was so upset. He was like, don't you know, I need you to be here. And I was like, need, you know, it, it, like it completely turned me off. So I've had a number of men when I pulled back, that was one reaction, just instantly getting upset. The other reaction was there were other instances where the men that I was seeing at the time wanted to actually come and visit me when I stopped going to them. It was at that moment when they wanted to put forth more effort to actually come spend time with me. And it was important for me to see that, not just that they wanted to put forth the effort, but that they would actually put forth the effort to come visit me. That is critical because that lets you know if your feelings are in alignment with how they feel. There were also some instances where the relationship was just completely over the minute I stopped going to visit them. Believe it or not, this is the part I was always pleased to see because it let me know who I was really dealing with and whether or not they were really feeling me, you know? Sometimes we think a, a man is feeling us and he ain't really feeling us. He's just faking the funk, <laughs> you know? And that, ladies, I will say is a move you must make if you are traveling to see a man regularly. Some of us prefer to go to him. And I will acknowledge that for all of the reasons that I've done it. But even if you as a woman prefer to have that control to go to that visit that man, and travel to, to get to him, at some point I'd say sooner rather than later, but at some point it's important for you to pull it back. 
and stop traveling to see him and see what he does. Does he instantly work to come visit you? If he does, you need him to do that because that's an investment that he is now making in your relationship. Or does he let the relationship fizzle out? So many of us women want to stay in denial, but this is a real answer that you need to know. Is he willing to come to you? At the end of the day, how we as women view traveling to a man is completely different <laughs> than how they view us traveling to see them. And I didn't know this. I really did not know this, but it can come across as being thirsty or desperate if you as a woman are always going to visit him or always traveling to get to him. And it's so crazy to me because I never looked at it that way because thirsty and desperate, the people who know me know that that is the farthest thing <laughs> from who I am, like never that. But it's so crazy that you having your own list of reasons why you would travel to this man, some of which involve your, your safety and you know, you kind of controlling your time that gets, gets read as, oh, she really feeling her brother, <laughs> you know, she really feeling me, you know, I'm the man. <laughs> it can be interpreted by some of these men that they are the prize, which I really don't know how you even get to that conclusion. But men and women are very different in how we see the world and how we look at situations. So I say that to say, I hope you enjoyed the discussion. And here, what I also want to say in the context of this conversation is this. On our trips, when we travel and meet in the world's most beautiful destinations, we talk about different topics that are happening in the world, who we are as people, what's happening in the news. We talk about a number of different things. We don't just talk about travel. Because as people, we are getting to know each other, it's important that we find common ground. We find similarities in each other and we find differences. And that can only be done by having conversations on a variety of topics. So on this platform here on YouTube, although we discuss primarily travel related content, I am going to expand the topics of discussion because that's how we do when we travel together as a Black Travelers Network travel community. If you, ladies and gentlemen, have not subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and do not forget to like this video. Don't forget to like it. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen.